I'll tell you, um, in my little world, people know me, but on the streets or you know, in public, other than doing what I'm doing that Clint has taught me, people are getting to know me in public. So I'm not a best-selling author yet. I'm not a television celebrity yet in other people's minds, but I am in my own mind. So what I have to tell you is don't go to this joint venture summit if you're not physically emotionally mentally ready to do this thing because money will make you more of who you are right now I mean the more money you make as a result of going there will make you more of who you are if you're a stressor you're gonna be more stressed if you're a worrier you're gonna be more worried if you have a, a challenge with your self-esteem it's gonna get worse when more money comes in because you'll have a lot more freedom and you'll have a lot more capabilities and it'll only make life worse so get your head and your heart in gear and get ready to be there because the thing about a joint venture is it minimizes the risk of doing business you, you syndicate the risk like in real estate where you can have three or four people sharing the cost you magnify the ability to become successful because you have more heads and hearts involved and then here's the best part and I'll tell you this flat out and I, I will challenge anyone on this hangout if they think otherwise your first hangout is always the hardest and think about how hard it's going to be to do it alone. How many times have you been to a seminar trying to do a joint venture? It doesn't work. Why? Because it's not the topic. They're focused on something else. How many times have you been on the phone or on a webinar or um, if you've been networking and you haven't created a joint venture? Why? Because it's not the topic. How many times have you wanted to reach out and touch someone who you're seeing right now? Actually, give them a high five or shake their hand or a hug if they let you, <laughs> but you, you haven't been able to because you haven't been in the same place at the same time with the same intention. Well, at the Joint Venture Summit, the topic is joint venturing. So it's actually legal to ask people to joint venture, and it's not like you have, you have to bite your fingernails and wonder, oh my gosh, are they going to do business with me? There, we are there to joint venture if you have a a joint venture worthy of devotion and there are many ways you can juggle the factors to make it a win-win and don't just go there saying hey mail your list that you've spent 20 years to build and I'll pay you 50 percent all right don't approach me that way and don't approach anyone else and I hope you're not a student of mine if you approach people that way because that's not a joint venture a joint venture is to be able to juggle the factors to make it a win-win and the toughest joint venture is the first, just like making fire is hard. I don't know if you've ever tried. I was a Cub Scout trying to make fire. I got blisters trying to make fire with wood, right? It's hard. But fanning fire, just even blowing at the fire, you know, the embers and everything, the, the fire catches. I mean, there is, there's reality shows where they're giving them flint because they're going to die, you know, out in wherever they are, like Survivor, because they can't make a fire, right? Well, you get to make fire because the Joint Venture Summit is your spark. And it's easy to fan a fire. It's just hard to make one. And so you get to collapse maybe three years, two years, a year into three days. It'll take three days out of your life and what you learn and what you get done before you leave there may have an impact for the rest of your life. Now, I'm going to get on my soapbox again and again and again. And if you're there, I tell you to repeat the word again until you get there so if this is something that is not comfortable for you then don't don't be there because this is how powerful a joint venture can be um, the key to a joint venture is separating the people who can't stand you apart from the people who are still undecided <laughs> and I've done a pretty good job of doing that I guess and so in this world where joint ventures are becoming more and more of a safety net because the the risk is less and the the likelihood of winning is much greater it is crazy not to make this event the event that you go to this year. If you have a budget to go to like two events or one event or five events, you got to be at this one because it makes it okay to walk up to someone who has a lot more experience than you, who has a lot more money than you, has a, has a lot more um, market um, know-how than you, and probably has lost tens of thousands of dollars, in my case, um, a few hundred thousand dollars more than you, most likely, it's it's okay to walk up and ask if you can do a joint venture. We're going to teach you how to do your pitch, just like Clint teaches uh, his people, and he taught me to get in front of a bunch of producers, and I'm getting them one by one by one once I got the code. So if you want to crack the code, you make it there. If you don't, then don't.
but you've made it this far. I mean, it's been an hour and a half. You got to be thinking, I want to go. So make it happen. Don't tell me it's money or time. It's priority. If we don't make the top five or top ten in your list, right, you're not going to have the money or time to be there. But if we do make the top five or top ten, like the lattes that you buy or whatever else that you're doing, right? If we make the, we make the priority list, then you will be there. And I'm not trying to polarize you right now to tell you not to go or even challenge you. I'm telling you, go there with a purpose and walk out with the passion and commitment, knowing that you cut a deal that you could have never cut anywhere else. Mark, that's what I had to say.